invites her members dispersed throughout the world to gather in vigil and prayer. For this is the Passover of the Lord, in which by hearing his word and celebrating his sacraments, we, make, we share in his victory over the Let us pray. Oh God, through your Son you have bestowed your people the brightness of your light. Sanctify this new fire and grant that in this Paschal feast we may so burn with heavenly desires that with pure minds we may attain to the festival of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. invite everybody to gather in the north.
prophet shout salvation for the victory of our mighty King. in radiant light resound with the praises of your people.
Let us now hear the record of God's saving deeds in history, how he saved his people in ages past, and let us pray that our God will bring each of us to the fullness of redemption. And extinguish your candles, please, and we stand for the first reading. No, sorry, we, we sit for this reading and we stand for the candle. A reading from Genesis 1, the story of creation. When God began to create the heavens and the earth, the earth was without shape or form. It was dark over the deep seas, and God, God's wind swept, swept, swept over the waters. God said, let there be light. And so light appeared. God saw how good the light was. God separated the light from the darkness. God named the light day and the darkness night. There was evening and there was morning, the first day. God said, let there be a dome in the middle of the waters to separate the waters from each other. God made the dome and separated the waters under the dome from the waters above the dome. And it happened in that way. God named the dome sky. There was evening and there was morning, the second day. God said, let the waters under the sky come together into one place so that the dry land can appear. And that's what happened. God named the dry land earth and he named the gathered waters seas. God saw how good it was. God said, let the earth grow plant life, plants yielding seeds and fruit trees bearing fruit with seeds inside it, each according to its kind throughout the earth. And that's what happened. The earth produced plant life, plants yielding seeds, each according to its own kind, and trees bearing fruit with seeds inside it, each according to its kind. God saw how good it was. There was evening and there was morning, the third day. God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. They will mark events, sacred seasons, days, and years. They will be lights in the dome of the sky to shine on the earth. And that's what happened. God made the stars and two great lights, the larger light to rule over the day and the smaller light to rule over the night. God put them in the dome of the sky to shine on the earth to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. God saw how good it was. There was evening and there was morning, the fourth day. God said, let the waters swarm with living things and let birds fly above the earth up in the dome of the sky. God created the great sea animals and all the tiny living things that swarm in the waters, each according to its kind and all the winged birds, each according to its kind. God saw how good it was. Then God blessed them. Be fertile and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let the birds multiply on the earth. There was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. God said, let the earth produce every kind of living thing, livestock, crawling things and wildlife. And that's what happened. God made every kind of wildlife, every kind of livestock, and every kind of creature that crawls on the ground. God saw how good it was. Then God said, let us make humanity, humanity in our image to resemble us so that they may take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, the livestock, all the earth, and all the crawling things on earth. God created humanity in God's own image. In the divine image, God created them. Male and female, God created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and master it. Take charge of the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, and everything crawling on the ground. Then God said, I now give you 
to all the plants on the earth that yield seeds and all the trees whose fruit produces its seeds within it. These will be your food. To all wildlife, to all the birds in the sky, and to everything crawling on the ground, to everything that breathes, I give all the green grasses for food. And that's what happened. God saw everything, everything that he made. It was supremely good. There was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. The heavens and the earth and all who live in them were completed. On the sixth day, God completed all the work that he had done. And on the seventh day, God rested from all the work that he had done. God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Because of it, God rested from all the work of creation. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you're able. Let us pray. O oh God, who wonderfully created and yet more wonderfully restored the dignity of human nature, grant that we may share the divine life of him who humbled himself to share our humanity, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Israel's Deliverance from the Red Sea, a reading from Exodus. As Pharaoh drew closer, the Israelites looked back and saw the Egyptians marching toward them. The Israelites were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, weren't there enough graves in Egypt that you took us away to die in the desert? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt like this? Didn't we tell you the same thing in Egypt? Leave us alone. Let us work for the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to work for the Egyptians than to die in the desert. But Moses said to the people, don't be afraid. Stand your ground and watch the Lord rescue you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never ever see again. The Lord will fight for you. You just keep still. 
Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites, Israelites to get moving. As for you, lift your shepherd's rod, stretch out your hand over the sea, and split it in two so that the Israelites can go into the sea on dry ground. But me, I'll make the Egyptians stubborn so that they will go in after them, and I will gain honor at the expense of Pharaoh, all his army, his chariots, and his cavalry. The Egyptians will know that I am the Lord when I gain honor at the expense of the Pharaoh, his chariots, and his cavalry. God's messenger, who had been in front of Israel's camp, moved and went behind them. The column of cloud moved from the front and took its place behind them. It stood between Egypt's camp and Israel's camp. The cloud remained there, and when darkness fell, it lit up the night. They didn't come near each other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord pushed the sea back by a strong east wind all night, turning the sea into dry land. The waters were split in two. The Israelites walked into the sea on dry ground. The waters formed a wall for them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians chased them. <laughs> I know. Uh, <laughs> okay, we'll find my place. The Egyptians chased them and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and cavalry. As morning approached, the Lord looked down on the Egyptian camp from the columns of lightning and clouds and threw the Egyptian camp into a panic. The Lord jammed their chariot wheels so that they couldn't turn easily. The Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites because the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water comes back and covers the Egyptians, their chariots, and their cavalry. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. At daybreak, the sea returned to its normal depth. The Egyptians were driving toward it and the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the cavalry, Pharaoh's entire army that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. The Israelites, however, walked on dry ground through the sea. The waters formed a wall for them on their right hand and on their left. The Lord rescued Israel from the Egyptians that day. Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the amazing power of the Lord against the Egyptians. The people were in awe of the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord for an overflowing victory, horse and rider, he threw into the sea. The word of the Lord.
horse and its rider he has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my Savior. I will sing. Let us pray. O God, whose wonderful deeds have all shined forth even to our own day, you once delivered by the power of your mighty arm, your chosen people from slavery under the Pharaoh, to be a sign for us of the salvation of all nations by the water of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from Ezekiel. The Lord's power overcame me, and while I was in the Lord's spirit, he led me out and set me down in the middle of a certain valley. It was full of bones. He led me through them all around, and I saw that there were a great many of them on the valley floor and they were very dry. He asked me, human one, can these bones live again? I said, Lord God, only you know. He said to me, prophesy over these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the Lord's word. The Lord God proclaims to these bones, I am about to put breath in you and you will live again. I will put sinews on you, place flesh on you, and cover you with skin. When I put breath in you and you come to life, you will know that I am the Lord. I prophesied just as I was commanded. There was a great noise as I was prophesying, then a great quaking and the bones came together, bone by bone. When I looked, suddenly there were sinews on them. The flesh appeared, 
and then they were covered over with skin, but there was still no breath of them. He said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, human one, say to the breath, the Lord God proclaims, come from the four winds, breathe, breathe into these dead bodies and let them live. I prophesied just as he commanded me. When the breath entered them, they came to life and stood on their feet, an extraordinarily large company. He said to me, human one, these bones are the entire house of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is perished. We are completely finished. So now prophesy and say to them, the Lord God proclaims, I'm opening your graves. I will raise you up from your graves, my people, and I will bring you to Israel's fertile land. You will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you up from your graves, my people. I will put my breath in you and you will live. I will plant you on the, your fertile land, and you will know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it. This is what the Lord says. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, by the Passover of your Son, you have brought us out of sin into righteousness and out of death into life. Grant to those who are sealed by your Holy Spirit the will and the power to proclaim you to all the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand.
Through the Paschal mystery, dear friends, we are buried with Christ by baptism into his death and raised with him into newness of life. I call upon you, therefore, now that our Lenten observance is ended, to renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and all of his works and promise to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into heaven. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of the bread, and in the prayers? I will, with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil and Whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord. I will, God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I, I will, will with God's, God's help. help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of our sins, may he keep us in eternal life by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. It is now time to say, Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia.
after they finish, I do the collet. I haven't done the collet. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who made this most holy night to shine with the glory of the Lord's resurrection, stir up in your church the spirit of adoption which is given to us in baptism, that we, being renewed both in body and mind, may worship you in sincerity and truth through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Romans. Or don't you know that all who were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried together with him through baptism into his death so that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too can walk in newness of life. If we were united together in a death like his, we will also be united together in a resurrection like his. This is what we know. The person that we used to be was crucified with him in order to get rid of the corpse that had been controlled by sin. That way, we wouldn't be slaves to sin anymore, because a person who has died has been freed from sin's power. But if we died with Christ, we have faith that we will also live with him. We know that Christ has been raised from the dead, and he will never die again. Death no longer has power over him. He died to sin once and for all with his death, but he lives for God with his life. In the same way, you should also consider yourselves dead to sin, but alive for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. When Israel came out of Egypt, the house of Jacob from a people of strange speech, Judah became God's sanctuary and Israel his dominion. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The sea beheld it and fled, Jordan turned and went back, the mountains skipped like rams, and the little hills like young sheep. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
What ailed you, O oh sea, that you fled? O oh Jordan, that you turned back? You mountains that you skipped like rams, you little hills like young sheep. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Tremble, O earth, at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the God of Jacob, who turn the hard rock into a pool of water, and flintstone into a flowing spring. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Very early in the morning on the first day of the week, the women went to the tomb, bringing the fragrant spices they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they didn't find the body of Lord Jesus. They didn't know what to make of this. Suddenly, two men were standing beside them in gleaming bright clothing. The women were frightened and bowed their heads toward the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He isn't here, but has been raised. Remember what he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the human one must be handed over to sinners, be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words. When they returned from the tomb, they reported all these things to the eleven and all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. Their words struck the apostles as nonsense, and they didn't believe the women. But Peter, Peter ran to the tomb. When he bent over to look inside, he saw only the linen cloth. Then he returned home, wondering what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We may be seated. Well, folks, we have been waiting 40 days uh, about for this, for this night. It is good to come to a uh, beginning of the Alleluia season. Now, it's, uh, I've been given the honor of, uh, of telling you, not only telling you, but uh, giving you the sermon by, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a classic Easter sermon from St. John Chrysostom who was a fifth century bishop, uh, and he was the bishop of Constantinople, and he was uh, noted as one of the great preachers uh, of his time. And this sermon was written around 400 AD, or CE, as it is now commonly known. One of, one of the things about uh, Bishop uh, Persostom is that he was part of the little people. He was for the common person, and his theology followed suit. His theology was very practical, very practical, and so he wrote this classic 
sermon that I'm going to give you this evening. And you might, you might uh, be aware that probably in many, many of the Episcopal churches and Anglican churches around the world, this sermon is being preached tonight. So we are part of a holy crowd, so to speak. And, and let me just say also, uh, I, if I were to put a title to the sermon, it would be called, God is an equal opportunity God who accepts all. And he says the following, are there any who are devout lovers of God? Let them enjoy this beautiful, bright festival, Easter time. Are there any who are grateful followers of Jesus? Let them rejoice and enter into the joy of their Lord. And then he speaks to us, those of us who have fasted during Lent, he says, Are there any weary with fasting? Let them now receive their reward. And then John says something that should put all of us at ease who did not keep a Lenten discipline. He says, if any have toiled from the first hour, let them receive their due reward. If any have come after the third hour, let him with gratitude join in the feast. And he that arrived after the sixth hour, let him have no doubt, for he too shall sustain no loss. And if any delayed until the ninth hour, let him not hesitate, let him come too. And he who arrived only at the eleventh hour, let him not be afraid by reason of his delay. Thank goodness for this allowance that he gives us. And then he continues, For the Lord is gracious and receives the last, even as the first. He gives rest to him that comes at the eleventh hour, as well as to him that toiled from the first. He accepts the works performed, but he blesses the endeavor. The deed done he honors, but the intention he commends and praises. Let all enter into the joy of the Lord. First and last alike receive your reward. Rich and poor rejoice together. Sober and slothful celebrate the day. You have kept the fast and you have not rejoiced today, for the table is richly laden. Let no one go away hungry. Partake all, all of the cup of faith. Enjoy all the riches of his goodness. Let no one grieve at his poverty, for the universal kingdom has been revealed. Let no one mourn that he has fallen again and again, for forgiveness has risen from the grave. Let no one fear death, for the death of our Savior has set us free. He has destroyed by enduring it. He destroyed hell when he descended into it. Listen to that phrase. He has destroyed hell when he descended into it. He put it into an uproar even if, as it tasted of his flesh. So magnificent words that he writes. And then he says, Isaiah foretold this when he said, You, O hell, have been troubled by encountering him, God's anointed, when he descended below. Hell was in an uproar because it was done away with. It was in an uproar because it is mocked. It was in an uproar for it is destroyed. It is in an uproar for it is annihilated. It is in an uproar for it is now made captive. This is one of the great words of John Chrysostom that in essence puts hell in its place. And now he brings it home. This shows the preacher that he was. Hell took a body and discovered God. It took earth and encountered heaven. It took what it saw and was overcome by what it did not see. O death, where is thy sting? O hell, where is thy victory? Christ is risen, and you, O death, are annihilated. Christ is risen, and the evil ones are cast down. Christ is risen, and the angels rejoice. Christ is risen, and life is liberated. Christ is risen, and the tomb is emptied of its dead. For Christ 
has risen from the dead. To him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Happy Easter, everybody. Let us pray, thanking God for the victory that Jesus Christ has won by his death and resurrection. It is for us that he has triumphed. Blessed are you, eternal God. Risen Lord, we offer prayers for all members of your holy church as we seek to fulfill your mission of hope and reconciliation. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Andrew, Kay, Jeff, and Hector, our bishops, Minerva, David, Al, Nancy, our priests, and Victoria, our deacon. Grant that every member of your church may truly and humbly serve you. Inspire the inspire and lead those who hold authority in the nations of the world and make us mindful of those who live with violence and oppression. We pray for peace throughout the world. Have compassion on those who suffer from sickness, grief, and trouble. May they experience the healing power of the spirit of the risen Christ. Look with kindness on our families and homes, so that we may live in dignity and in peace. Strengthen this community in Christ's self-giving love. Give us the grace to live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. We remember those who have died we praise you for all your saints who have entered into glory. I don't know if it's noted in the bulletin, but we're going to go ahead and do our special prayers and intercessions. So I invite you to think of those for whom you would like prayers are the things that you give thanks for. And uh, we also, and I'm inviting all of those of you who are joining us via Zoom, I have my chat box open so I can get your prayers as well and share them with the body here present. We ask for healing and pres guidance for Juliana, Lily, Ron, Elise, Judy, Sherry, Charlotte, Charles, Glenda, Shane, Aliona and her family, Mary's family, Jane, Josie, Ramona, CJ, Minerva, Paul, and Augustine. We give thanks for all those who are recovering from COVID. We give thanks for all the people who have made it possible to have this beautiful liturgy. We give thanks for all the people in the background who've done all the good work to make this evening happen beyond the wonderful resurrection of Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, we pray for those who have died, especially HL, JL, Ron, Licha, Don, and Mary. We give thanks for the birthdays of Marisa, Rodney, Julieta, Henry, and Peggy, 
and we give thanks for the anniversaries of Susan and Mike, Ann and Doug, Sherry and Marvin. Are there any other prayers for the good of the people? Margaret and Angie. Margaret and Angie. To heal their spirits. We lift up these prayers, O oh Lord, to you. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also, also with you. Peace with you. Peace of the Lord. Peace with you. Peace with you. Peace with you.
Let us stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to our Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to you, God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have del delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command of Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in this sacrifice, that we may be made acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where, with St. John and with all of your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. For by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. 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 And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Nuestra Pascua se ha sacrificado por nosotros. Celebrate, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Sangre de Cristo, cáliz de salvación. The body of heaven, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, the man of salvation, the body of Christ, the man of heaven, the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, the man of salvation.
Better stand. Let us pray all together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage, love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs>